Hi, I'm Amit, and I'm one of the many researchers who contributed to this paper called From Words to Sound, Neural Audio Synthesis of Guitar Sound with Timbral Descriptors. In the next few minutes, I will present an overview of this research, the work that we have done, and also a demo of the resulting system. In modern music production context, there are endless choices when it comes to digital synthesizers. One class of these synthesizers is physical modeling. This screenshot is of a popular VST plugin called Motodrum. This is a physical modeling synth for generating drum sounds. Physical modeling tries to emulate the timbral characteristics of real-world instruments. Typically, a number of labeled parameters can be used. For example, in Motodrum here, there are physical characteristics like the diameter and depth of the instrument that is being modeled to synthesize the desired sounds. By design, however, there may be limitations to the types of sound that can be generated using physical modeling. Towards the other end of the synthesis spectrum, popular subtractive and additive synthesizers provide almost endless sound design possibilities, but this comes at a cost of increased complexity. Each parameter in such a synth acts in relation to the value of other parameters, so a user does not always know how, to, uh, how a change in one parameter can impact the timbral characteristics of the final sound. Unlike physical modeling, it's quite hard to assign any semantic label to many of the input parameters in these type of synthesizers. So when evaluating synthesis options available to musicians, we see a trade-off between providing control with semantically labeled parameters and the sound design possibilities. Physical modeling sits on the left of this dimension and subtractive and additive synthesizers are on the extreme right. Deep learning offers a potential solution. If we can create a generative model that has both semantically labeled latent parameters and others which are not, then we can provide musicians with the ability to navigate the latent space to generate new sounds while restricting the latent space to the timbral characteristics that they want. There are several works in the literature which have employed neural networks to achieve sound synthesis. There are a number of interesting methods and architectures ranging from VAEs, uh, GANs, WaveNet-like models, and using DDSP blocks, but these models have some issues. Depending on the architecture, the synthesis can take a long time, and of course that's not desirable for music production workflows. The latent dimension is often quite large, and it makes it time-consuming to navigate through. It's unclear what the latent parameters represent. That is, they're not semantically labeled and are often entangled. This makes it difficult for the musician to understand the effect uh, different parameters have on the output. And often, the audio fidelity is not good enough for music production. With all of these issues, we wanted to know is it possible to map timbre descriptors to a latent space to generate high fidelity sounds? If this can be done, then we can achieve a balance between semantically labeled parametric control and sound design possibilities. To answer this, we built an end-to-end -end system, which is a deep learning powered instrument that synthesizes guitar samples using voice commands. What you see here is the instrument UI, which lets users interact with the deep learning system. Our system has four components, the sampler, which is the front end, the interface for the user. As a first step, the user speaks into their microphone, giving the sampler a voice command. The recorded voice command is converted to text using a speech to text component. The descriptors recognition component uses the text to generate a descriptor's embedding. This embedding is used by the sound generation component to generate the corresponding audio sample, which is then sent back to the sampler, where the user can play with the sample and create subsequent requests by modifying some of the parameters. Let's look into the different components one by one. 
For automatic speech recognition, we use off-the-shelf pre-trained models. We are using Wave2Vec and QuartzNet. At runtime, one of these models is picked up to perform ASR depending on the environment being used. Descriptors recognition utilizes natural language processing to identify the words in the text that describe timbral qualities. And it generates an embedding to be used by the next component based on this identification. This component works in two steps. First, by identifying which words in an input sentence describe timbre. And in the second step, it matches those words to the guitar sound taxonomy. This taxonomy consists of nine word pairs. This is the guitar taxonomy that we use. Each word pair consists of opposing timbral descriptors. Embedding generated by the descriptors recognition component corresponds to these nine pairs. For example, if we have this sentence as the input to the descriptors recognition component, the named entity recognition part of the component picks up the relevant timbral characteristics present in the input and maps them to the guitar taxonomy using word-to-word -word matching. Next, we come to the sound generation component. We created an autoencoder for this component, and we call this model timbre conditioned autoencoder. As the name implies, this model uses semantically labeled conditioning parameters in the latent space, which correspond to different temporal characteristics. This is the overview of the timbre conditioned autoencoder. Let me step through the different parts of this uh, component. We use a perceptually motivated quasi-harmonic model to convert the raw audio to instantaneous magnitude, frequency, and phase for the fundamental frequency as well as for each of the harmonic frequencies that's expected to be in the raw audio. This transforms our input from a one-dimensional vector to multiple 2D tensors that we use as input for the encoders. And yes, we have two encoders, a CNN encoder, which outputs a two-dimensional vector, and a heuristic model, which gives us an 11-dimensional vector as an output, where each of the dimensions correspond to a unique timbral character. So these are uh, semantically labeled. This means that the decoder has a compact 15-dimensional vector as an input. Two values from the CNN encoder, 11 semantically labeled values from the heuristic model, one value from the MIDI note number, and one from the MIDI velocity. 13 of the 15 inputs to the decoder are labeled. The decoder generates instantaneous magnitude and frequency for the fundamental as well as the harmonic frequencies. The decoder output is fed into the quasi-harmonic model and the raw audio is generated. The Tamar condition autoencoder is trained on the guitar subset of the nSynth dataset, where each sample is four seconds long at a sample rate of 16,000 hertz. So we have 64,000 samples for each example. We use composed loss on the instantaneous frequency and magnitude. The sampler component is the interface that can be used to interact with the system to generate new sounds. It has functionality to record user voice commands, audition generated sounds, manipulate the latent space for the timbre conditioned autoencoder, and finally, the sounds can be played with a MIDI interface. This is a pretty broad overview of the system. And due to the time constraint, it's not possible to dive deeper into any specific component. However, for details, you can refer to the paper itself. We have more information in the appendices and we have a companion website. All the resources can be used to not only understand how the system works, but all the source code is available as well and everything can be reproduced. Next, let me show you a quick demo of the system. Once the sampler is up and running, you can record a voice command. Give me a warm guitar. Once processed, the text generated by the sound recognition component is displayed in the sampler. Users can click on the audition button to generate a single note. 
Clicking audition button sends the text to descriptor recognition, which sends the embedding to sound generation, which generates a single uh, guitar sample and sends it back to the sampler. This can then be played back. The first two faders on the left, uh, on the top of the sampler, can be used to navigate the two-dimensional latent space that corresponds to the CNN encoder output. And the 11 faders on the right correspond to the heuristic model output. So these are all labeled with labels, for example, attack time, decay time, ratio of odd or even harmonic frequencies, and so on. After auditioning, these faders can be used to manipulate the latent space of the decoder. In this instance, we are increasing the high frequency energy and we are increasing the attack time and playing with a couple of other parameters. Then we audition the sample again. Once we are happy, we can click generate to generate all the samples in a typical guitar range. And we can use a MIDI interface to play the instrument. When evaluating the system, we asked a group of professional music producers to use it. These producers have music production experience ranging from five years to 20 years. We conducted a survey to measure the quality of the samples being generated by the system. We also conducted interviews to understand how the system may fit into a music production workflow. We got mixed results when asked if the sound matched the input text command. And uh, during evaluation, users were asked to circumvent the speech recognition component to avoid any transcription errors that would hinder evaluation of the descriptor recognition and the sound generation components. When using semantically labeled thumbnail characters, the results are better suggesting that the heuristic model encoder used to condition the tumble condition autoencoder works well. In other positive notes, the audio fidelity is high. There are vast sound design possibilities when using the system. We found some positives based on the evaluation, and um, we found that change in the semantically labeled timbre parameters does have the expected impact on the generated sound. The system is useful for sound design, and there were some serendipitous discoveries. And uh, the generated sound quality has high fidelity. We also discovered some negatives. Parameters are entangled. Sometimes changing one parameter might change two or more characteristics. User interface could be improved as well. Specifically, it was difficult for the reviewers to fit the current system in their existing music production workflow. Coming back to the original question, we were able to come up with a deep learning system that meets both of these objectives. It affords control via semantically labeled parameters, and which are not large in number, and allows for vast sound design possibilities. Our work has an impact on few different fields, including uh, neural audio synthesis, audio representation, and music production. We can generate guitar sounds from words. We have a system that maps semantic parameters to latent space. The timbre condition autoencoder generates high fidelity sounds with low latent space dimensionality. We have new set of perceptually relevant heuristics uh, that we use. And we also use new semantic audio representation that extends the quasi-harmonic model via heuristics. And we propose new taxonomy that describes guitar sounds. This was an open source community-driven project with over 150 contributors from the Sound of AI community. We followed a collaborative open science approach to this research. And in addition to the research itself, we are proud of the way it was accomplished. If you found this presentation interesting, please try out our deep learning-based instrument yourself. If you don't want to install anything on your machine, you can still try out the sound generation component using a web app. The source code is available publicly along with the companion website if you want to reproduce the research. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. 
please feel free to reach out to me or to anyone in the Sound of AI community if you have any questions.